Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to continue talking about the atmosphere by talking about types of air movement. So to talk about this lesson, first we'll introduce the two types of air movement, wind and fronts. And this lesson is specifically going to focus on wind. So then we'll talk about what causes air movement or wind. And the two main things are the Earth's rotation, which causes something called the Coriolis effect, and pressure differentials. Let's get started. All right, cool. Air movement, there are two types. The first type is wind. Hopefully we are all familiar with wind. And wind is just horizontal movement of air. The second type is called a front or an air mass. So this is just like a massive region of air that has the same temperature and moisture throughout. So you guys might have in the past, it might have been kind of like warm weather recently, and then all of a sudden a cold front blows through. And so that's like just a, a giant blob of cold air. So fronts and winds have the ability to change our weather. All right, so like I said, today's lesson is specifically going to focus on wind. All right, so what causes wind to move? There's two main things. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the Coriolis effect. I know this is a crazy word, but Coriolis was just the name of the man who came up with this idea. And the Coriolis effect talks about how the Earth's rotation affects the movement of wind and actually water too. So you look in this diagram here, you can see that as the earth spins, the wind also spins in certain directions. And you should notice that for the top half, or the northern half, or the northern hemisphere, the wind goes one direction. But it's different for our southern half, or our southern hemisphere. All right, so in the northern hemisphere, winds travel clockwise. You can see that in this diagram here. In the southern hemisphere, winds travel counterclockwise. The same thing actually happens for water as well. All right, so the Coriolis effect has some huge impacts on the Earth. So first off, it means that cold air from the poles travels south. So if we continued this arrow, it would come down like this in a counterclockwise direction and it cools down the equator, right? While warm air from the equator travels north and warms up the poles. So, why do we care about these global winds caused by the Coriolis effect? Our global winds are redistributing heat around the Earth. They're spreading it out, so we have warm air at the equator, it travels to the poles. We also have cold air at the poles, travels to the equator. So this controls the movement of storms and weather. And by the way, this whole concept should sound extremely familiar to you because the Coriolis effect also applies to our ocean currents where we have, and you can follow along with my arrow, we have cold water from the poles traveling north towards the equator and warm water from the equator traveling south towards the poles. All right, you are now ready for check-in one. Go ahead and get started on the PowerPoint. What causes wind to move? So the main thing you need to know about is pressure differentials. So before we talk about that, we need to be clear as to what air pressure is. And air pressure is just the weight of air pressing on the earth, right? So believe it or not, we actually have air pressure on us now. We can't feel the weight of air just because we're used to it, but believe it or not, it's there. So scientists use this tool called a barometer to measure air pressure. You should also know that air pressure decreases as altitude increases or as your height in the sky decreases. And this is just because the higher up you are, the less air that's weighing on top of you. So there's less air pressure. All right, so a pressure differential is just differences in pressure. Makes a lot of sense. 
So wind is caused by differences in temperature and pressure. So wind flows from high pressure to low pressure. You have to memorize this because this is going to come back over and over and over again. That wind and any air actually travel from high pressure to low pressure. High pressure to low pressure. High pressure to low pressure. You have to memorize this. All right, so cold air is more dense. Same as cold water is more dense. So this cold air, because it's packed more tightly together, it has more pressure. It actually cause, causes cold air to sink. Hot air is less dense, so it has less pressure. The molecules are more spread out, and it rises. So since air travels from high pressure to low pressure, you should know that cold wind is going to flow to warm area, er, warmer areas where we have low pressure. All right, you're now ready for check-in two. Go ahead and move to the PowerPoint and get started. And then that's it for today.